George has given Gracie $25 and told her to buy him some long underwear. But on the way, she passed the shop of Pierre, the famous dress designer. Naturally, we now find her talking to Pierre. Uh, I want a new evening gown, Pierre. The most gorgeous thing you've ever made. Now, how much is Madame prepared to spend? Well, all I have with me is $25. $25? Well, yes. My husband gave it to me to buy him some long underwear. But my gown is more important. I, I want to be glamorous. I want to attract more attention than Lana Turner. Madame, for $25, all the clothes I could give you would be a bow around your waist. Oh, I, I don't want to attract that much attention. <laughs> The cheapest gown I make is $100. Well, here, take the $25 as a down payment. You'll get the rest when the gown is finished. Well... Oh, please, I've just got to have the gown. And my credit is the best in town. Madame wouldn't pull my leg, would she? Well, anything to get the gown, stick it up. <laughs> Never mind, I'll take a chance. Oh, wonderful. Now, remember, create something really divine. Oh, have no fear, Madame. I'll put everything I've got into this gown. Oh, good. With what you put into it and what I put into it, it ought to be sensational. Well, back so soon, Gracie? Did you uh, get my long underwear? Uh, no, I couldn't find any. Oh? Well, give me back the $25. Oh, I couldn't. Why not? Why not? Why not? Uh, why not? Yeah, why not? Uh, because it's in my shoe, that's why not. Well, take your shoe off. Right in front of you? <laughs> I've seen you with your shoes off before, you know. Why, George Burns, you peeping Tom. Gracie, I want my 25 bucks. Oh, there's someone at the door. I'll be right back. Hey, good afternoon, madame. I've come to take the major. Oh, but... Pierre, I can't talk to you about the gown now. I'll meet you at your shop in ten minutes. Gracie, who is that? What do I hear about measurement? Oh, well, uh... Oh, well, I guess you've got me. It was going to be a surprise, but... Well, I'll tell you. I, I couldn't find any long underwear in the stores, so I hired this man to make you some. Um, his name is Pierre. Pierre? The famous French long underwear maker. A French long underwear maker? Oh, yes. He, he, he makes underwear for General de Gaulle, and you know how long they'd have to be. Oh, so you gave him the $25? Yes. I, I didn't want to tell you, but now you know. Well, if you excuse me, I have to run in and change. Gee, I'm going to be wearing genuine handmade French long underwear. That's real class. I'll have to shorten my trousers. Uh, pardon, monsieur. Yes? Madame said she would meet me at the shop to give me the measurements, but I'll be at the studio for the rest of the day. Oh, you're Pierre. My wife told me what you were going to make. Uh, I'd like to hear just what you've got in mind. But of course, monsieur. I plan a gorgeous creation of pale peach satin. <laughs> Peach satin? Uh, that's good. You can trust the air. Now, around the neck will be a delicate frou frou of lace. A frou frou? Yes. The neckline will be cut low to reveal a tantalizing glimpse of bare white shoulders. <laughs> And the neck will have a frou-frou. Yes. <laughs> you're, you're sure you've made these things before? Oh, it's my life work. Well, you ought to know what's best. <laughs> I suppose it buttons down the front, huh? Oh, no, no. Down the back? No. There'll be no buttons, just one zipper. <laughs> But there are proof rules around the neck. (laughs) 
In the front, nothing should break the simplicity of the drape, unless one chooses to wear a rhinestone slip. I don't think one will. Well, anyway, monsieur, my creation will be the gayest thing at any party. Who sees underwear at a social? Underwear? I'm describing a gown. I don't need a gown. I'll just sleep in the underwear. I was speaking of the gown I'm making for your wife. My wife? Yes, she gave me $25 down on a $100 evening dress. I see. Gracie, come in here. Yes, dear? Gracie, you're not going to buy any $100 gown from Pierre. Oh, but George, I only wanted it so I'd look my best when I went out with the handsomest man in Hollywood. That's me? Well, sure. <laughs> well, I, I don't mind if you spend, say, $30. So I'm the handsomest man in Hollywood, huh? You're the handsomest man in the state of California. Well, spend sixty dollars. <laughs> You're the handsomest man in the whole country. Okay, spend a hundred bucks. In, in fact, you're the handsomest man in the world. What's that for? You got the dress. I, I'm working on a mink coat. I see what you're doing. <laughs> Well, it's breakfast time in the Burns home, and the ham is just coming in from the kitchen. His wife is already at the table. <laughs> Good morning, Gracie. Good morning, dear. Breakfast is all ready. Good. Did you notice the new, uh, the new couple who moved in next door? I'll say. He was out in the yard taking a sun bath this morning. Yeah. Don't blame you for looking. <laughs> Guy has got the sort of a figure that women like. Now, me, I'd much rather have your figure. You would? Well, sure. If I had his figure, I'd look like a man. <laughs> I hadn't thought of that. Uh, George, you know they're newlyweds. Oh, there's someone at the door. I'll see who it is here. Good morning, Mrs. Burns. Here's your mail. Oh, thank you, Mr. Postman. Uh, my husband and I have been talking about the new couple next door. They just got married yesterday. Oh, a fate worse than death. <laughs> oh, Mr. Postman, all marriages aren't like yours. You're not happy because you're henpecked. Not henpecked, Mrs. Burns. I'm buzzard battered. <laughs> Mr. Postman, if your wife is such a mean woman, why did you marry her? I didn't know I was getting married. She told me it was a civil service examination. <laughs> and it's too late to leave her now. We have two children. Two children? Yes, Herbert and Chevrolet. <laughs> Chevrolet? Yes, what we really wanted was a new car. <laughs> Same. I'm sure those newlyweds next door will be very happy. Oh, look, you can see them through, through the window, just sitting down to breakfast. Oh, isn't that romantic? He's holding her chair. Yes. Yeah. Do you hold your wife's chair, Mr. Postman? Oh, always. If I let go, she beats my brains out with it. <laughs> look! Look, now he's kissing her hand. Oh, I wish George were like that. Doesn't Mr. Burns ever kiss your hand before breakfast? Are you kidding? With his appetite, I wouldn't touch my hand near him. <laughs> oh, look, now he's buttering her toast. Oh, yes. And now he's holding it while she nibbles at it. Eggs and that sweet. Yes. I wish Bertha and I could be that chummy. Well, maybe you and your wife should do more things together. Share the same interests. We used to dig in the garden together, but I got worried and made her stop. Why, Mr. Postman? She dug a hole just about my size. <laughs> well, goodbye, Mrs. Burns. Remember, keep smiling. <laughs> Well, did you see how I handled him, Virginia? Oh, he, he seemed a little confused. Oh, well, he's been that way ever since he married me. 
And now, Virginia, I'm going to show you the most important thing of all. How to get money from your husband. But, Mrs. Burns, don't husbands give their wives money without being asked? <laughs> Cute. <laughs> now, uh, Virginia, let's say that I want $25 for a new hat, which I do. There's one method that never fails. Flattery. Every man loves to be flattered. Just watch this. Oh, it's you again. What's wrong with you today? You're acting sort of crazy. Oh, yes, and it's all your fault. You drive women crazy. Crazy with love. You heartbreak of you. Well, here we go again. <laughs> what woman can call a soul her own after she's looked into your soft beige eyes? Gracie. It's like looking into two pools of nylon. <laughs> Look, Gracie. Oh, you're so incredibly handsome, George. Oh, if I were only a sculptor. Let the others make statues of Apollo and Mercury and Hercules. You're the man I want to chisel. <laughs> Look, Gracie. Oh, George, George. Why did Mother Nature have to blow her top on you? I don't know. But let's face it, dear. I didn't marry just an ordinary mate. Believe me, we're in the same boat. Oh, the strange and tender things that remind me of you. The sight of your tousled hair in the morning. Your strong white feet at even tides. Your girdle hanging on the line. Yes, tender, tender, yes. The kindness that shines from your eyes. The warm, generous smile that lights your face when I ask you for $25. Gracie. The glow of your hand as it leaps to your billfold. Uh, the sudden whoosh of air rushing in as you open it. <laughs> the soft crinkle of two tens and a five as you press them into my palm. Those are the things you like about me. Yes. The blur of my hand as I whip out my billfold. Like this. That's it, that's it. The whoosh of air as I open it. Like this. Oh, I love that. The crinkle of two tens and a five. Like these. Oh, yes, dear. These little things remind me of you. I'm going to give you another tender little memory to tuck away in your heart. What, dear? The merry sound of my laughter as I shove it all back in my pocket. <laughs> Oh, but George... I'm ashamed of you. Downright ashamed. You say you love me. And yet you deliberately flatter me and lie to me to get money. Oh, I'm ashamed of myself, George. It was as low as he thinks it is. You shouldn't lower yourself for such a measly amount of money. Twenty-five dollars. You're right, dear. I'll go out and come back again and try for fifty. Oh, what? <laughs> from next door, aren't you? Yes, Mrs. Burns. I'm Virginia Jackson. Oh, yes, you know, I've been wanting to have a little talk with you. You see, there are certain things that every young girl should know, and I happen to be one young girl who knows. <laughs> I see. Now, sit down, Virginia. I, um, I suppose your mother told you how the bees carry pollen from flower to flower on their feet? Yes, she did. Well, I'd advise you to forget that. <laughs> I tried it, and believe me, it's nothing. Well, really, Mrs. Burns, I'm sure Jim and I will never quarrel or anything. He's so sweet and handsome, especially in his uniform. You see, he was a captain in the Army. Oh? Well, George did his bit, too. Oh, really? What was his rank? Air Raid Warden Junior Gray. <laughs> oh. George was wounded, but he didn't get the Purple Heart. He sat on his flashlight. <laughs> But Jim was lucky. He was overseas for four years and didn't get a scratch. Overseas for four years. And how long have you been married? Two days. Oh, you do have a problem. I do? Oh, yes. If he's been gone for four years, it's going to take a lot to reawaken his interest in women. <laughs> I really don't seem to be having any trouble. <laughs> Better 
Better, better safe than sorry, Virginia. Now, I can tell you how to keep your husband happy from now on. First, remember that a wife must be all things to her husband. Uh, what, what do you mean? Well, when he wants a pal, be a pal. When he wants a fascinating siren, be one. Oh, I wouldn't know how. Oh, it's easy. Now, George is in again. You listen, and I'll show you how to be fascinating. Oh, hello, dear. Hello, you great, big, strong, wonderful you. <laughs> huh? How's about a kiss for your ever-loving mama, kiddo? <laughs> kiddo? Assassinate your donor. What is this anyway? What's going on here? Kiss me, kiddo. <laughs> Gracie, is there something wrong with you? Haven't had any complaints yet, kiddo. <laughs> Look. No, uh... no, I'm fascinating. Come on, let's fast. Gracie, would you like a doctor? One at a time, kiddo. I'm not sure with you yet. <laughs> Stop. This has gone far enough. Seems to me we haven't even started. Gracie. Yes. Oh, get out of here. Oh, uh, I wish George would act like a newlywed and hold my chair and butter my toes. Maybe he will if I give him a chance. Uh, dearest. What? I'm about to sit down to breakfast. Well? Well, would you hold my chair for me? What for? You can't miss it. <laughs> Sit down. Yes, dear. George? Now what? Butter my toast for me. Butter it yourself. You got a broken arm? <laughs> hold it up and I'll nibble on it. Are you nuts? No. No, it's fun if the husband holds the toast and the wife nibbles at it. What do we do with the next piece? <laughs> Throw it in the bathtub and bob for it? <laughs> George Burns, you've got no romance in your soul. You haven't even kissed me this morning. Okay. There. Now let's eat. Oh, no, not like that. Kiss me like you used to. That's exactly the way I kissed you on our wedding night. You kissed me like that when I was a blushing bride? Sure. Wonder what I was blushing about. <laughs> oh, I've had enough of this. I'll see you later. <laughs> So that's why I came to see you, Bill. Ever since those newlyweds moved in next door, she's been very lovey-dovey. Oh, well, of course, George, that's it. She wants you to act like a newlywed. Me? Well, sure. Leap in the door, pick her up in your arms, and scorch her with burning kisses. Want me to do that? Well, in your case, limp in and shake hands. <laughs> Okay, comedian, if you don't want to help me. I am trying to help you, George. Now, why don't you make with the lovey-dovey stuff? You know, that gooey talk. I'm not good at that. Well, still, you've given me an idea. I like so lovey-dovey that you'll get sick of it. That might work. Hmm. I'll talk real mushy. That ought to make me repulsive, huh? Well, with the start you've got, how can it miss? <laughs> so long, comedian. Good luck, newlywed. <laughs> George, back so soon? Yes. Great big daddykins hurried home to smother his mommakins with kisses. Mm. Oh, George. We'll kiss all night and all day tomorrow and oh, all the... Tomorrow I have a beauty shop appointment to get my eyebrows plucked. Daddykins will singe them off with burning kisses. Mm. Is it as grand? No reason isn't. <laughs> but Daddykins is making like a newlywed. Well, I like you better the way you were before. Okay, Gracie. Oh, that's better. Now let's go out to dinner the way we planned. Good. Get my coat, will you? 
Get it yourself, you cripple. <laughs> Yes, Gracie? George, they're going to put on a big musical program in the Hollywood Bowl tomorrow night. That's nice. I've always wanted you to sing there, darling. The birds are sweetly singing and perfume flowers are bringing and the wind is rolling as it's passing by. <laughs> now I'll do all my singing in the bathroom. My voice belongs in the tub. You're wrong, George. Your voice belongs in the bowl. <laughs> Yes. Well, thousands of women would jam Hollywood Bowl to listen to you. Women like my voice, huh? Oh, yes. Ordinary crooners make their bobby socks quiver, but you shake women in their foundations. <laughs> Funny, Hollywood Bowl is for those classical singers, like Nelson Eddy. Oh, you're much more convincing than Nelson Eddy. Why, when you sing shortening bread, you can actually smell it. <laughs> Thanks. Bill Goodwin is going to be the master of ceremonies at the bowl, and I've invited him over here to hear you sing. So take off your clothes and jump into the bathtub, dear. I've already filled it with water. I don't need a bath. Well, I know, but you sing better there. Bill will think you're Frank Sinatra. I sound like Sinatra in the bathtub, huh? No, but you look like him. <laughs> you sound much better. Oh, honey. Well, you do. Anyhow, Frank Sinatra wouldn't dare sing in the bathtub. Why not? Suppose the stopper came out. <laughs> Hasn't thought of that. Oh, really, George? You're too modest. You're the greatest singer who ever lived. Oh, no. Not greater than Al Jolson. Oh, Pooh. You're greater than Al Jolson and Frank Sinatra put together. Oh, Gracie. Well, what would you have if you put them together? Just a man down on his knees without the strength to get up again. <laughs> You really think I'm that good, huh? Oh, you're the top. Sing some off me right now. Open the furnace of your throat and scorch me with a hot lick. I love you, love you, love you, I do. You're the only girl that I adore. Oh, babe! Oh, you? you're dynamite to the throat. Is that hot enough for you? Oh, it's just like sitting behind the exhaust of a Greyhound bus. <laughs> How soon will Bill be here to listen to me? Oh, any minute now. So hurry up and jump in that tub full of water. <laughs> but, honey... Oh, here, here comes Bill. Now, don't argue any longer. Well, okay. You'll see. Bill will be enchanted when he hears those glorious notes come pouring out of the bathroom. Oh, hurry. Hi, Gracie. Why'd you call me over? Oh, well, you'll see in just a minute, Bill. Well, I haven't got much time to wait, Grace. Well, I'm just really saying, there's a few flowers are bringing in the way to go around the stuff There, Bill. Did you hear that? Gosh, where's it coming from? In the bathroom. Okay, get me a plunger and I'll fix it. Oh, okay. <laughs> George, I've just been sitting here looking at you. You ought to be in pictures. Oh, Gracie, I'm no movie star. But you could be, dear. You're loaded with sex appeal. <laughs> Don't be silly. Movies are for guys like Gregory Peck. Oh, pooh. How can you compare a pet to a man who has it by the bushel? <laughs> Forget it. I'm not for pictures. You are, too. You've got everything any leading man on the screen has. Now prove it to you. Just name one. All right. Charles Boyer. Charles Boyer. What's he got? What's he got? Yeah. How about those eyes? You've got just as many. <laughs> it's not how many. It's what you do with them. For example, Boyer has a way of dropping his eyes. Well, you can drop yours. You even have little built-in hammocks for them to drop into. Look, Gracie, granted I might have a certain amount of charm, but 
Could I handle the acting for a picture, Earl? <laughs> I knew you were going to say that, and I'm ready for you. What do you mean? Well, I have a little scene here that I wrote just for you. You run the entire gamut of emotions in it. Oh, Gracie, I... Oh, uh, what's the matter? Afraid to find out how good you are, huh? No. All right. Give me the part. Here. Now, you play a soldier who has just come back from the wars. You have a beard and a bandage around your head, and your eyes are all bloodshot. They'd look gorgeous in Technicolor. <laughs> yeah, I can, I can say it all now. Mm-hmm. All right, now. I speak first. Mm. And give it everything you've got, George. Okay, go ahead. Oh, my darling, you're home. Home at last. After all these months of waiting, hoping, praying. Tell me, darling, quickly. Are you all right? Are you all right? Yes. <laughs> oh. oh, you've been shot Yes, I can see it, you wounded Oh, my poor dearest Where did they get you? Where, where? Here <laughs> Oh, it doesn't matter I'll nurse you back to health You'll be well and sound again, my love. You shall have every care. I'll never leave your side for a minute. You'll never be alone again. Never, never, never. Gee. <laughs> oh, darling, seeing you again is so wonderful. I'm afraid I'm going to cry. Oh, and I must cry. Laugh, laugh, that's what I should do. <laughs> Oh, you see, God, get dying. Yes, I'm dying. <laughs>